Good afternoon everybody and welcome to this week's BizSmart Lunch and Learn webinar. We run weekly webinars aimed to provide advice and share knowledge on key business topics and specialist areas. Joining me today is BizSmart Select Member Les Gutteridge from 101 System Works. Um, he will be hosting today's webinar called Magical Macros. Les, would you like to tell us more about the work that you do at 101 System Works? Afternoon, everybody. Les Gutteridge here. Um, what do I do at System Works? Basically, I'm passionate about Microsoft Office and I'm passionate about uh, people getting the most out of Microsoft Office, especially in Excel and Access. I write applications for people so that they can accomplish their work in a much, much faster time, usually saving nigh on 90% of time so that they can speed up things. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can get the most out of uh, the background of Excel, writing macros and uh, showing you the best way to start, even if you're a beginner. So without much more ado, I'll uh, carry on if I can, Caroline. Lovely, just one second. If I can ask anybody, if you have any questions, um, please post them on the um, on the site using your question mark function. And then Les, I'm sure, will do his best to answer them all at the end. I will do. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So, here we go. So, yeah. Welcome to today's ma um, webinar, Magical Macros, and we're going to be using the power behind Excel. So I'm just going to switch over to Excel now. And I'm going to give myself a, a new um, workbook, because I don't want to use the other one that you could see uh, too early. Um, first of all, Practicalities. You can actually record macros uh, without much more ado, but you're better off if you actually have a new tab up here called Developer. And to switch that on, you do File, and you come down to Options, and you look at customizing the ribbon and on this side of the screen you can actually see that there is a a, um, a, a developer tab that is not ticked uh, and you'll in order to record macros you're better off with that that going so I'm just going to put a tick in there uh, clicking OK and you'll see that up the top now we've actually got a developer tab and that developer tab has got the buttons so that you can record a macro and, and do other things while you're actually in, uh, in, that, in that mode. So what sort of things do people do with macros? Well, at the very least, you can record the actions that are required in order to do a, a repeated task. So, for example, one of my clients has got a, a spreadsheet that he gets from somebody, um, a third party, daily, and has to manipulate that spreadsheet so that it's um, in the right format for, for his needs. And that requires cutting out columns, cutting out rows when they're not necessary. And all of that can be done uh, because he does the same things every time. All of that can be done by recording the, uh, the actions and the keyboard presses and the mouse clicks um, so that it, becomes, it can become part of your system. So I'm just going to record a macro. Uh, if you've never done this before, then uh, great. And if you have done it before, well, I might say things that you've uh, not thought about before. Uh, and uh, I'll be talking about where the code is recorded in a second. So I'm just going to click this button. And the first thing you get 
is the dialogue in order to um, set up certain things. So uh, let's say I need to do some formatting of particular cells on a regular basis. It might be that I want to, uh, for some reason, I need um, some font color, some sort of background color, where, uh, and bold. So I'm going to I'm going to record a macro. I'm going to call it cell format one. Notice I haven't actually put a space in the name of that macro. Uh, it doesn't like it. If you like a bit of gap between cell and format, then use the underscore. If you want a keyboard press to be uh, available to run that macro in the future, then you can actually put in a, a letter there. It's got to be a letter, so it might be F for format. Uh, if you put Shift and F, so you get capital, that means that uh, all three of these things must be pressed in order to run the macro. Where is the macro going to be saved? Uh, is it going to be saved in this workbook? Or it can be saved in two other places. You can actually save it. Sometimes it's good to put it in a, a new workbook, but not as um, it's not that's not as common as saving it in the in the workbook that you're currently working in. Uh, and sometimes it's best to save it in what's called the personal macro workbook. Now, uh, if you don't know anything about the personal macro workbook, that is a file that saves on your computer and loads up every time Excel loads up. And it goes in a particular place. Uh, it'll tell you in the notes that I'm going to send you uh, where that is. Uh, because it depends on your username uh, on your computer as to the exact place. Uh, but it is actually in the C users folder, uh, and it's in a sub folder of that. So the personal macro workbook, it's like a little store of your gems that you've, uh, that you've recorded as time goes on. What sort of things have I recorded? Well, I've recorded... Um, special macros to alter the case of text because you can't do that easily in uh, in Excel. I've recorded macros to join um, two cells together um, because I do that regularly in my with the data that people send me that I have to manipulate. Um, I've got a macro that's puts a format on for telephone numbers because I hate it when telephone numbers are uh, um, are not laid out in the same way, because I'm a bit of an anorak with the data. But anyway, lots and lots of things. Um, I've got macros for clients, which are pages and pages, because it's uh, we're recording uh, stuff that goes on a bit. But sometimes they're simple, one-liner sometimes goes on a bit. So this one, I'm actually recording it in the in this workbook and i'm going to click ok and up here look the button that i clicked earlier on has now changed flavor and it's gone to that one so i'm just going to pick a particular place on the spreadsheet and then i'm going to go and set up the formatting that i'm going to use it doesn't matter that there's no text in the cell because it's still going to record the, um, the steps that I'm taking. So I'm going to do red, italic, and bold. And I'm going to go back to the developer tab. And I would click that. Or indeed, you can actually notice there's a, a stop recording button down at the bottom as well. So you've got two places in order to terminate the, the thing. And uh, I've stopped the recording. Now, where the hell has it gone to? Um, to see the code that I've just recorded, you have to go into what's called the Visual Basic Editor. And to go to the Visual Basic Editor, you can either click that button or as you can see from the comment that's dropping down there, <clears throat> uh, if you remember the keyboard shortcut, Alt plus F11, 
that will get you there faster, in my, in my opinion. So here we go, Alden F11. And here is the Visual Basic Editor. It's actually showing you some code that I've already recorded in the other workbook, but we need to know where the hell it is now. So, if you pardon my terminology. Um, here is a list down here. I'm just going to switch this off for the moment. This is like, this is the Project Explorer. So, it lists here the, the files that you've got open. Uh, and it, it puts the recording in things called modules. And if I click that little plus sign there, uh, it's created a new module called Module 1. We can actually give it a better name than that. But here is the code that I recorded, look. And it says the name that I gave it. Uh, and it says that I jumped to cell D6. Uh, and that selected cell, we're altering the font of it. And we're putting a color in. Every, every color has got a particular index number, as um, it's called. Uh, and the shading and the italic I switched on, look and the board I switched on, OK? So if you want to go back to Excel to do things, you can either click that button. But as you can see, you can use the same keyboard press, Alt and F11. So that is an important keyboard press to remember. And I'm just doing it myself now so that I can jump back. Going to record another one. But before I do that, I just want to say to you, you're better off if you're actually seeing the code recording. So this is what I like to do. I like to push that to the side so that it's actually going to live over there if it decides to, which it won't let go for some reason. I'm using uh, Caroline's machine. I hate it. Anyway, sorry, Caroline. Uh, this I'm going to push to the other side by grabbing there and pushing. And as you can see, I've got both the worksheet and the code, sheet, uh, code screen uh, visible so that I can see what I'm doing on both sides of the coin. So let's say, um, incidentally, I'll just put some text in there so that um, it was D6, wasn't it? Just going to put some text in D6 so that you can see it is red with italic and bold switched on. Uh, and I'm just going to put Caroline's name in there. And um, I'm just going to record another formatting, which I'm going to call cell format 2. <coughs> Here we go. Click. I'm supplying a name, no spaces. I'm not going to give it a. Uh, I'm not going to give it a keyboard press. It's going in this workbook. I'm clicking OK, and over here you saw the bit of text appearing, telling me that I'm starting the recording of cell format two. So let's say, for example, I'm going to make that text blue. You can see it beginning over on the other side, can't you? Uh, italic and bold look. So both of those things appeared as I was doing it. I'm going to go down here this time, and I'm going to stop the recording so that that little block of information um, is complete. Um, now, a bit about things that are over here. I must have not been on the ball there because it was a spurious word in there. It must have been when I was typing less. I wasn't in the same, uh, in the in the correct screen, but never mind. Uh, you just delete that because it's uh, it's got to be, all the code has got to be between the word sub and the end sub. So that defines the beginning and the end of the of the code, that bit of code that you're writing. Um, colors. 
I don't know whether you can see this, but that word sub and that name cell format one is uh, one's blue and one's black. Now the blue things are what we call keywords. The green word, the green words are what we call comments, and they are actually non-executable. And notice they've all got uh, apostrophes in front of them to tell you um, to stop anything taking action. So they don't do anything, but they're there in order to uh, explain yourself um, away. You can put your own comments in if you want to. Um, and it's a good thing to, it's good technique in order to comment your work so that when you come back to this, even after three days, you might have forgotten what the code was doing. So it's a good idea if you explain to yourself for the future so that you understand what you're trying to set out to do. Now, when it comes to it, uh, sometimes you have to say, I don't really need that bit in the, through experience though. Uh, I don't always want to go to range D6. I don't always want to go to cell D6 when I switch this on. So you can edit the, the work, and I call it cutting out the dross. So the, the nitty-gritty of what I was trying to do there was alter the font color and switch on italic and bold. Uh, when I inspect format 2, cell format 2, um, in fact, I haven't put any dross in there. I could cut this out if I wanted to. So it's just like word processing in Word. You just highlight the lines and just press delete, and uh, it just takes away the things that you don't want. Uh, there's nothing vital in there in that comment. Just going through it. Now then, if you miss and you click and you get that this effect, that means you put a what's called a break point in there. I haven't got time to explain what that is, but for the moment, just click it again and get rid of it. And also, uh, if you select there, it doesn't actually do anything if you want to run it. So don't worry about having anything selected uh, on that side of things. Now, I'm just going to put some information in there. I'm going to... I hope Kevin's listening. Kevin Brent. I'm putting your name in there. And I'm just going to show you how to test out that bit of code. Click in the middle of this paragraph, if you call it a paragraph. And then you can actually either run it with that button. And notice it's actually done the job over there. I'm going to click in there. I'm going to run that one this time. And, that, and now we've gone to um, the, the second kind, which was blue, italic, and bold. Okay. Or if you want to test it out step by step, then you click in the middle of the paragraph, anywhere at all, and you use F8. As soon as you press F8 once, you can see a yellow execution marker so that you're actually beginning to go through these steps and this this remember this one is turning the information into red italic and bold so here we go i'm just going to keep on pressing f8 this time it's going to turn it red watch the spreadsheet over on the left And as soon as it comes to the last line in the uh, the end sub line in the uh, in the in the code, then uh, it stops showing you the yellow marker. Now, so far I haven't really told you a great deal, uh, but what I'm hoping you realise is there is a lot to learn about macros. But I do think it's vital that you actually see where the code is going and being able to test it out with by pressing F8. All of these keyboard shortcuts, by the way, are, they are in the notes that I'm sending you. So I hope that's OK. Um, I'm just going to start a new macro. And this, I'm just going to call this test. Not, it's going in this workbook. 
because I want you to see there's the macro starting I just want you to see what happens if you do certain things so look I'm clicking there now and it's telling me I've clicked on F10 I'm holding my mouse down and I'm selecting that range and look it's telling me I'm selecting F10 to F17 I'm clicking here it's telling me I've selected column C and if I do this it's telling me I'm scrolling the window now this is what I mean by dross um, you don't really want it to record the fact that you've scrolled in your in your macro so it that would be definitely a line that you get rid of in the future so things that appear that you that are not the ultimate aim of what you're trying to record you can uh, remove okay um in order to get things through things in half an hour i've actually done some um i'm turning into blue peter here uh, because i've um, i've got something uh, i better stop this recording which i've just remembered otherwise it'll um it'll carry on recording so i just clicked on g14 uh, with a nervous twitch uh, and it's recorded it for me anyway just want you to I'm just going to go over to um, this file <clears throat> which uh, I will give you um, and it will actually show you a, a few things that you can do uh, and it's worth studying the code that I've uh, that, that I've um, that I'm going to give you um, this is this file is called webinar uh 2015 june june 23 uh and it's called magical macros uh here is the file i'll just pull that aside so we can see a bit more here is the file down here and i've got two mac two um modules one's called cell manipulation and i've just double clicked on there and here is the here is the code that i've i've done and you can actually i'll show you how to do this but you can uh, you can put code onto a button to click um now quite often what you have to do uh, well for example as a pre um pre-explanation you know when you highlight something and then you say oh i want that lot to be bold uh and i want it to be italic um if you want to do that one at one step at a time in a block like that then the code I've written over here uh, is a few ways of actually doing the same thing now for example if I click this button when it decides to work hang on sorry I'm sure you saw what happened then it actually traveled down it went to cell b2 and it traveled down that column uh, and it actually made a decision it asked um, is the cell got a value bigger than 50 and if it has make it blue and if it otherwise in other words less than 50 make it uh, red italic um, and I'm just going to click this button because what that button does is it actually takes all that away and here's another button with another macro on and this time it's going to go to b2 and travel all the way down the numbers in column b uh, and it's actually going to make the same decisions but this time it's not stopping halfway it's going to go down also i've got a an interaction in there it says i'm about to change data do you want to go on i've said yes and it's gone down and this time it stopped there why has it stopped there i'll tell you in a minute I'm just going to clear that off finally and it's asking the same question but this time it's going down all of that block and doing all of them and uh, and, and altering that now let's have a look at the the macros that were actually doing that first of all which macro did that that run basically you right click the button 
which is actually just a shape, by the way. And you can uh, the reason I use shapes is that it uh, gives you a lot more um, scope with colouring and uh, and putting a uh, text inside the button to say what the button does. What I did was I assigned a macro. This is called the macro list, and basically, uh, when I did the assignment, I just actually asked it to go for this one called for next example. And if I click the edit of that, it'll actually take me to the bit of the code in here that is doing the job. So what does this code do? First of all, it takes you to, to cell B2. In fact, why don't I run it with an F8 like I did before? Here we go. So watch the birdie over on the other side of the screen. So it's gone to B2, look. And, and it's this time I've set up what's called a variable as a whole number. That's what an integer is. And it's going to count from 1 to 10. So the active cell is where the box is on the spreadsheet. And it says, does that active cell hold a number bigger than or equal to 8, uh, bigger than or equal to 50? If so, it will turn it to blue. Otherwise, it will turn it to red. And I've actually written a separate bit of code called red italic, and it's going to go to there, shoot off to there. Uh, here's the one we were working at. It's done that bit of code, and then, it, oops, sorry, pressed the wrong key. Uh, and then it says move down one. Now, there's the bit of code. I've written this in the notes because if you want to do some movement, you have to say start at a particular point. I could have said range B2 there, range B2 dot offset 1 naught, I could have said, but you're better off saying the active cell because that is more general and it allows you to start from where you are in position on the spreadsheet. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and it says offset one row down no columns across that's what that means and select a block that's the same size as one cell a1 it says select there so when i do that look watch the birdie on the other side of the on the spreadsheet and it will actually go down one cell you need it to be a, you need that bit of code in order to travel down a block of information how am i doing for time caroline you're okay, and we'll have some questions soon. Okay. So I'm going to, over on the code side now, it says next. So we actually, the word counter is actually holding the number one look. I'm ho just hovering over it. And now I'm going to go into there, and it's actually now holding number two. So it's the second time around. Hope that makes sense. Here we go. This time the number is bigger than 50 look in cell B3 over on the spreadsheet. And this time it's going to do the blue bold bit. And then it's going to move down one. If you don't want to see it going through, oops, sorry, I pressed the space bar. <laughs> see you, Leslie. If you don't want it to, uh, to see the, the action or move one down but actually do it you can um, jump over it with shift F8 oh dear Caroline I ain't your computer sorry <laughs> <laughs> anyway I'm doing shift with F8 so it's actually done that code but it hasn't actually shown you the steps it's taken to do it and I'm just going to move on Watch the birdie. I'm just holding Shift F8. Watch out the birdie on the left-hand side, and it's actually going through them. And it's actually come to the end, I think. That's it? Yeah. It came to the end, and I uh, overpressed, and it started again. Um, so there. This for next is a way of doing several goes at the same stuff. Um, it's doing a test, so that's what the if is. It's a bit like the if function in spreadsheet. 
Uh, and you've, I've already set up some code in there to, in order to do a particular job. So that's what the for next is. But the trouble with for next is you have to tell it how many times you're going to do it. And you can't always guarantee knowing how many times you're going to do it because there's more than 10 cells on that spreadsheet over there. So I'm just going to clear out that information so that I've gone back to black and white. Uh, and there's another kind of inf another kind of way of traveling through. Where is it? Let me just do a right click and make sure I'm going to the right one. Oops, sorry, I'm going to say no to that. I should have right clicked rather than. There you go. So which macro did I assign to that one? Answer: Do until empty. So. This time, what's it doing? Here's the code up here. Look, do until empty. The first time, it's asking you for a response and a message box. And it's a yes, no message box. Just study what I've given you. And it says, if the response is no, then don't do anything. Exit the, uh, exit the code. Otherwise, it will actually move on to this. So here we go. I'm just going to run that and see what happens. Notice. It's still doing the same test. Is the number bigger than 50? And it's still moving down one cell to move on to the next one. And, and the test, there's a final test. Do until the active cell is empty. That's what that means. So that's why it's actually going to stop down here at B20. So let's see what happens. There's the question. I'm going to say yes. Going down the mall, it stopped at cell B20 because that's where the active cell was equal to nothing. This one, it's going to clear it. Uh, I haven't got time now to show, go through all of these, but uh, have a look at what that does and have a look what this does. This is more complicated and I haven't really got time. Oops, what did I do then? Don't panic. So, yeah, I want to continue. It's going through all of those cells and uh, doing the business. Now then, I just want to finish off by telling you a bit more about what to do over on this side. Um, there's a view option. And if you want to see the properties window, that's an important thing. I'm just going to click yes to that. Now, this is where you can rename the modules that you're working with. Notice here, you can't rename it by clicking on there. You've got to have the properties open. I'm just going to call it VBA test. VBA is short for Visual Basic for Applications, and that's the name of the kind of programming language that we are uh, that we are using and up down there it says VBA test up here it says VBA test uh, so if you want the properties window open then you can switch it on remember if you click it off with a nervous twitch you do need to be able to switch it back on again obviously so uh, that was the properties window oops I'm not using your mouse properly here. Go for gold. I'll just press F4, which is what it tells you to do. Am I over here? Yeah. yeah. There we are. Um, there's a window that's missing here, and that's called the immediate window. And if I do Control G, the immediate window. Uh, appears now I'm typing directly into here I actually know what to type uh, 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 through experience you'll know what to type but let's say I actually want the program to jump to Z10 if I press enter now oops what did I do then oh forgot something I'm bothered with Caroline's computer, basically. You need to tell it to select the, the cell. 
Notice that it's predictive so that you can uh, just press the tab key or move up and down that list. The word, you'll know what the word is through experience, I'm afraid. But I've just pressed the tab key and it actually fills that in. And now if I press enter on the right on the spreadsheet side, watch the birdie. It'll actually select Z10 uh, over there. If I want to sell, uh, select columns, A to E, pressing enter now, there you are, look, selecting columns A to E. So this area over here is where you can, where you can practice and test things out. Uh, it's worth having a little play. Um, I think I'm coming to the end of my time, aren't I, Caroline? Yeah. Um, I hope it's been useful. It's, it's a, it really is a very basic introduction to something that's quite a, uh, a large subject, I'm afraid. Uh, and I've only touched the smallest tip of the largest iceberg with it, really, which is one of my favorite phrases. Uh, but um, be confident. Don't worry, you can't break it. And um, I'll send you some notes, as I said. Uh, covering most of the things and more uh, that I've uh, covered today. There is something that you can do with, um, with Visual Basic, and that is design your own functions. I just want you to see this one. I've written a function in here. I'm just going to go to it, hopefully. There it is there. It's a public function. If this is saved in the personal macro workbook, then that function will be available. And usually I'll write a function if, uh, if there isn't a, a special function available for doing a particular job. So what it's doing, look, it's working out the age based on somebody's date of birth. So you have to supply the date of birth. I'll show you how that works in a moment. It's got to be supplied as a date. And then it's doing today's date, which is what, that's a built-in function. It's doing today's date, take away the date of birth. Work, that works out how many days there are between the two dates. I'm dividing by 365 and a quarter, and that will actually create the number, calculate the number of years. So over here, look. I'm just going to write a date in there. I'm just going to write in um, the 12th of December. Nothing, um, nothing special about it, but uh, 2001. How do you start using that function? Here we go. You click that button. On here, it says user defined. It appears in the list. It's asking for the date of birth. How do you fill that? You just click the date of birth for that one. And you click OK. And it will work out that uh, that person is 13.52.53 uh, is years old. So you can set up uh, user-defined functions if you find that Excel can't do a particular job for you. So all in all, what have I said? I've said how to get the screen working for you so that you can observe what you're doing. Secondly, um, the sort of macros that you write depend on your needs. It might be simple working up and down a column of uh, information and adjusting it. Thirdly, you can write user-defined functions. And uh, actually, the world's your oyster. If somebody says to me, can you do this in Excel? I say, yes, you can, uh, and I either do it using standard Excel functions or I do it using Visual Basic in order to do the job. That's how I make my money, and uh, I find it really fun. I hope you uh, feel inspired enough to have a go, and, um, yeah, be confident. You can always ring me if you get stuck. Um, 
I'm available. My information details, my contact details will be sent to you with the email from Caroline. So happy code writing. Thank you so much, Les. That was great. We've had um, a number of questions come through. Um, we'll answer them the best we can at the moment before our time runs out. Um, I'll post the questions on our forum page as well, and Les um, will post some answers on there for us. So if you do have any um, further questions that we haven't covered today, please go onto our forum page on the Bismarck website and um, put Les to the test. Okay, the first question um, from Lucy. If I have written something in Excel 2013, will it still work in Excel in Excel 2010 stroke 13? Uh, the answer is mostly 99.95% um, of the code that you write in earlier versions of Excel will still run uh, in uh, later, more recent versions of Excel. So the answer is yes. If you don't find it working, then uh, give me a ring and I'll help you out. Okay, thank you. Next question um, from Paul. Um, are there any good websites for um, picking up any tips on um, Visual Basic? That's the code behind macros. Yeah, um, if you just Google um, a particular thing, um, of course, it's always knowing what to write when you Google something. But uh, if you say... Uh, something like Visual Basic Excel and then something like uh, filling a, a column of figures, then press enter. It will actually bring up several suggestions so that you go. And there are lots and lots of uh, great tutorial um, on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, and there's lots of other websites that you can go to. Perfect, thank you. Um, another question from um, Kevin. Can you give any examples of where clients have used macros to make their business more efficient? Yeah, uh, one of my clients um, is downloading um, competitors' information, actually. Uh, and uh, basically, he needs to say how his quotations match up to his competitors. Um, so what we do is we there are several steps uh, in that, uh, and um, we've identified what those steps are, uh, and I've created a, a dashboard of buttons in order to do uh, to do those tasks. Um, you can do things like email out using Visual Basic and uh, uh, and other cleverer things. So there's loads and loads of things that I've written for clients where. Um, I mean, I got my head down last week when I was at a client and uh, I heard this lady say, oh, this is good because I was, I'm doing, I've just done 20 quotations in 45 minutes and it used to take me all day. So I felt, um, you know, as, as though I won a few brownie points then. So that was good. Great. Thanks very much, Les, for a great um, session this afternoon. Um, you covered a lot of information there. If anybody... Um, um, wants to listen to the webinar again and go through it um, in their own time, you can access um, a copy of the recording in our crew room. Um, I'd just like to um, thank you all for joining us. As Les said, I will send out a copy of um, the presentation and Les's contact details to you all this afternoon. Um, don't forget, um, our webinars are every Tuesday at 1230 So thank you again for joining us, and Les and I um, wish you a great afternoon.